What's up, Tank Nerds? Lottie here again. Feeling a lot better. Still got a bit of a cough, um, but feeling a lot better. Anyway, today we are going to be going through the Brent Gun Carrier, specifically the cut down one that I'm currently seated in. And I will show you how it all works and some of the interesting side effects of the way that these were built. So, yeah, let's get into it right now. I am currently seated next to the driver's seat, which is here. We're fortunate enough to have an original one. Uh, I'm currently dismantling all of this. Uh, I'm doing this video right now because this is going to be my next job, pulling all this out. So while I have this opportunity, I would like to, um, yeah, I would like to show how it all works. We'll start simple and we will get more complicated. Simple throttle slash accelerator comes down to this linkage here, goes all the way through under my knee uh, to the firewall and then to the engine, which would sit on the other side of the firewall here. Likewise, our clutch pedal goes to this thick rod again under my knee to the firewall and to the clutch assembly in the back there. The brake, this is where things get a little more complicated. Um, this is our brake pedal in the middle. It connects to these two bell cranks. That's important, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and it pushes these bell cranks forward and back. You'll notice that there are two of them. One of them comes down here under my other knee to this bell crank and to this rod here, which goes behind me. The other one goes off to that side and pretty much the exact same setup to the far side. Now these two go all the way back to the brake drums. So there's one there and there's the other one over there. So that's pretty straightforward. And all the brake does is just um, push them on and off. The reason there are two is because when we come up to our steering wheel, this just works on a simple right angle gearing drive and it turns this whole um, rod uh, clockwise and counterclockwise, which turns this bell crank left and right. Taking the, um, the bolt out of this one, but essentially it bolts into these two here, which are the bell cranks from the uh, brake drums. So these are all connected. Essentially what that allows you to do is when you go full hard lock, this one is rusted sadly, so we can't go all the way just yet. But essentially, as you can see, I am turning left, which turns this bell crank to the right, which means it pulls this one over to the right so this is being pulled backwards. In turn, that rod is being pulled backwards into the hull and it activates the left hand brake. So when we turn left, it locks up this side of the track and then this side has all the power and pulls around. I'll discuss that more when we get to the back of the vehicle. Now, there are two more bell cranks on the steering assembly and these are quite interesting. They run backwards under the firewall to, if I can just get the camera on it, they run to this plate under here. I'll jump on the other side in a bit and show you the other side. Likewise, you can see uh, the other side here. Same again, it goes under the chair and through the firewall and it goes to the plate under there. Now this is because, camera around. Now this is because these LP2s, um, which is the model of um, carrier, they have what's called a bow tracked steering system instead of the traditional clutch brake steering system as found on 
the vast, vast, vast majority of vehicles, uh, tracked vehicles of the time. This one actually warps the track. Actually, track warping is the correct term, but um, bow track steering also works. Um, but essentially, it warps the track by forcing the middle um, suspension station to actually move laterally, left and right. <clears throat> and that warps the track in such a way that the vehicle will walk in a particular direction. It's not very good for low speed steering, um, but at high speed on a road, it's quite effective. Um, I don't like it and there's a reason no one else does it. Um, it's only been done on more or less this vehicle. Uh, we will get into that in a second. I'm just going to jump around and show you the other side. Alright, standing up again. Climbing over. And back into the hole. <clears throat> okay. Just to recap, these are the two rods that go to the brakes. And these are the rods that come from the steering wheel. This one here. And they go to this plate here. Now you'll see that this plate is a particularly sort of interesting sort of shape it's basically flanged on um, one side so as it turns this goes left and right it pushes on these um, rollers you'll notice there's one on that side and one on this side so essentially the whole plate just turns left and right and that forces this entire axle assembly to pivot uh, sorry to move laterally left and right which means that whatever's on the other side of that actually moves in and out too so that's how it works on this side you can even see the rollers oh well, my fingers out of the way you can see the rollers that allow it to move back and forward it's a really quite honestly very rudimentary um sort of setup uh there's no real fancy engineering going on here. This is all just lubrication and rollers, nothing fancy. Um, and yeah, it's all controlled by the steering wheel, which means the steering gets quite heavy. This is the reason why I can't turn the steering wheel. It's because it's connected to here um, and that plate is just rusted on at the moment. So this is probably rusted in there too. Um, this entire assembly can't move left and right, uh, which is problematic if you ask me. Before I move from here, I'll just mention that plate there is where the um, gear selector goes and it comes through that little hole there. I moved it yesterday and it moves to the, uh, to the gearbox, which is behind me or would be behind me. There's nothing there at the moment. Okay, I think that's it for the inside. I'll jump outside and show you how it all works out here. The one advantage of having a cut hole is that it's infinitely easier to get in and out of. There we go. Okay, stepping back to admire the uh, carrier for a sec. Um, we have our sprocket one of our sus uh, rear suspension station and our front idler. This is our middle um, road wheel assembly, I guess you would call it, slash suspension assembly. This entire three-wheeled piece is what moves forward and backwards. You'll notice that it has the return roller on it, which means that it's not only bending the bottom, but also the top of the track. I'll show you on the other side where we have left the track on. So you can see um, they sit in there and the road wheel sits on the top here. The carrier is off the ground, so there should be slack in the top here. Um, but just because it's off the ground, the, the track is um, hanging down. But yes, entire the, that entire assembly moves in and out of the vehicle, 
which instead of having a straight track, it will actually warp it this way and that way. And that way, um, as the vehicle is moving, it'll track one way or the other. But again, only really good on flat surfaces, mostly flat surfaces, and um, roadways going at high speed, which to be fair, they were kind of designed to, you know, go longish distances. So it kind of makes sense to a degree. Now, as we come back, we have our diff housing. So obviously this is what gets all the power and it drives both sprockets. Now what's interesting to note is that unlike traditional uh, carriers or tanks of the time, this is not a clutch brake steering system. It is purely a braking system. I'll show you one, the spare one that we got lying down here. So again, here's the diff. It is a single, single diff, which means when one side is locked up, all the power is gonna go to the other side. But because there's no clutch in either of these, uh, it basically acts as a pure straight uh, braking system. And I can even show you part of the inside. Uh, probably not the best example, there's nothing inside. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so basically how you would drive is with the steering wheel, you would pull it left or right, and that would gently um, angle the carrier left and right on the road by warping the track. When you want to do a hard turn, you pull it all the way down, very much like in the same way that you would pull on a tiller for a traditional tank or carrier, and that would lock up one of these brakes. Um, forcing um, all the power in the diff to go out the other way. So you're still locking up one track. You can't really, I suppose you can, by slowly increasing the pressure on, on the brake, it'll slowly push um, more power out the other side. But I personally think that is a really good way of burning out your brakes. Um, so that's why when you see these driving around, they're quite jittery um, from what I've seen. And you gotta be really forceful with the steering wheel because that's a lot of friction, um, pushing those in and out. And then you're having to actually fight because there's no clutch in these, um, you're fighting directly against the drive. For those who don't know, typically the way a lot of these older vehicles work is as you pulled on the tiller, the first section would actually um, disengage the clutch. So you would essentially have two of these kind of, and one of them would be what you would traditionally see as a clutch, like on a gearbox, like over there. Um, and that would disengage, um, yeah, it would disengage the clutch, which would reduce power. There we go, just gotta get this right in my head. Yeah, it would reduce, uh, it would stop power from getting to, to one wheel completely. And then all the braking force is purely just to slow down the vehicle. It's not actually fighting against um, the diff itself. And then all you would do um, is just replicate that on the other side. And the braking, instead of having to have two linkages, um, well, you would have to have two linkages at one point. In my mind, it works a lot easier. <laughs> so you'll have to believe me. Um, I prefer the clutch brake steering system, but this is certainly an interesting way of doing it. I don't think I'm explaining it perfectly. Um, I will probably go to a whiteboard in the future and do a lesson on clutch brake steering systems. But it's super easy once, once you get your head around it. Um, and that's what a lot of vehicles of the time actually used. But these are just straight up brake drums, for lack of a better word, which is um, quite interesting. There we have it. Um, I think that's just a quick little run through, quick little run through of um, how the steering on a Bren gun carrier works. 
I am excited once we get this one all up and running um, we can actually show you how it actually works at the current time both of these um, steering assemblies are completely frozen um, with rust which is not good I'm just gonna stand here um, yeah so hit like and subscribe I think <laughs> if you enjoyed this video leave lots of nice little comments um, and yeah ask questions ask plenty of questions I think that was just a quick little overview um, but yeah it's how I do so I will see you on the next one